All right, it's another episode of Call Him Poppy. This time we have a very special guest, a longtime friend of yours, Poppy, because I've My seen this man. stuff back in like 2014. You guys were making content back together, which is crazy because our guy Fat Joe, big Yankee fan, big Yankee fan, but this bond goes back a long time. I want to know where this started because this started when you were still playing. It goes from a mutual respect. You know, Poppy's the biggest in the game. Poppy's the biggest in the game in uh, baseball, and I'm killing them in the rap thing. And we big guys. We always love each other. We Latino. We embrace each other. But I'm here to admit that the only player, the player that got me the most nervous that played against the Yankees ever in the history. I'm talking about history. I've been a fan since I was a baby. Anytime Big Poppy came up to the plate, I was like, oh. Oh man, your mommy's coming. Oh my god, yo. <laughs> I got nervous every time you bat up. Every Is time right? you bat it up. <laughs> you know what, yo? Let me tell you something. When I think of New York, I think of you. Let me tell you why. One of the most famous songs that any artist has wrote about New York City. To me, one that you wrote is out there. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Call everybody out. I think that song that you wrote about New York, it got to be in the top three song ever wrote wow. about New York City. I tell you what, that song because I I I, I keep on telling people, as a Dominican, you grow up as a Yankees fan. Without a question, me, Manny, and Pedro. We kind of changed that a little bit <laughs> a Boston, but I'll tell you that. I mean, every Dominican from my era and back, it was all about New York because as an immigrant, you go to New York, build your family, you have you a lot of- You go to New people. York first. You know what I'm saying? So you go to New my, York first. My godfather's Dominican. He, he passed away, right? So my bond with the Dominican has always been one because one of the greatest men I know in my life is Dominican, Jose Reynosa. And he raised me as a kid and took me to Yankee games, bought me baseball cards, took me this. He's such a good man. And so I always loved Dominicans because my godfather, he raised me. So I was like, you know, always with the Dominicans. So now when you see I open my businesses and everything is always in uh, Dykeman or Broadway and stuff like that because I always felt like we was one people. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. Yo, let me ask you a question. Gary, you should know this about uh, Fat Joe. Why you are so into the community service, man? Oh, because, you know, me and you, we grew up so poor, you know, that... Uh, we're living a dream right now, just doing an interview or I would think, you know, we dreamed of this and then, but we can never forget where we came from and our people, you know, so we got to speak for the voiceless. We got to speak for the people that, uh, people don't hear their cries. We know them and we, we hear their cries. So it's up to us to not forget where we come from because we so blessed. We so blessed, our families are so blessed that we can never uh, forget where we come from. Big shout out to the presenting sponsor of Call and Poppy. If you listen to season one, you already know who these guys are. Nutrisystem for men. The all new Nutrisystem for men is a science backed high protein program that is designed for men to deliver lasting results. We talked about this the last time. We couldn't believe it. Poppy couldn't believe it. You can lose up to 30 pounds in your first 90 days. I thought that that was a misprint. 30 pounds in 90 30 days? 30 pounds in 90 days, brother. You ever have a teammate that needed to lose 30 pounds in 90 days, oh, Poppy? Plenty of it. Yeah. <laughs> a few guys that probably needed to lose 30 pounds in 90 days. Probably oh, would have helped. Not 30, but something close. That close. Let's call I it 25. Year. They need a nutrient system for men is what they needed, Poppy. Mm. You just eat the food and lose the weight. You ain't kidding. You love the bars. Every oh, yeah. time that we I do a podcast, bars, we put the bars man. out. I see I see you grabbing for the bars. Uh, let me grab them. <laughs> <laughs> Poppy's got to catch a flight, so he's going to be taking about three or four of these yes, bars yes. on the flight with yes, him. I love them. 
And can I you imagine if there's anything easier than getting food delivered to your door to help you lose weight? You get fully prepared meals delivered, a top rated app to keep your motivation levels high and free on demand coaching. It's a protein packed meal plan designed to give you sustained energy while crushing hunger and increasing calorie burn. And it makes weight loss easier for you. And here's the deal. It's actually a great one. Last time I said that this uh, this coupon code out loud, Poppy was like, are you fucking kidding me? There's no chance. There's don't no call, chance that don't that's Don't come to thing. me with a 20% off again. Oh, it is more than 20%, Poppy. What? It's more than 20%. What are we at? It's, even, it's, it's more than double that. What? You go to Nutrisystem.com slash Big Poppy 50. You get 50% off. That's two months. Rock. Two months of food plus free shipping. That is Nutrisystem.com slash Big Poppy to find out more and start losing weight today. Off. That's abusing. It is. And now you're part of two different communities because now he's talking about being down in Miami. And I actually, so I got to ask you about this because I'm a big sneak. I, or at least I thought I was a big sneaker guy myself. And then I found out just very recently that you might be the biggest sneaker guy on planet earth. And I know that like some of your collection you've now given away and like, it's not as big as it once was, but you could have made a case. Don't do that. Don't do that. that Cause the, I'll pull out a sneaker. You never <laughs> seen in your life. So, but like, there was a point where yes, you could have said you had every sneaker ever created. Listen, bro, let me get, give me, give me the Miami. Give me the Miami. Give me the Miami. The, 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 the Miami. <laughs> Listen, first time ever seen in the history. Oh, this. damn. Oh, damn. It's been, it was only one made damn. in the world. In the world. And it was made for the book, the TV show Ballers for The Rock. Mm -hmm. There is, look, sample. There is no, listen, brother. I'm the sneaky king, man. Don't. don't get it, man. Yeah, listen, one of one, meaning no one can bring it out. I don't mm -hmm. care if you're the richest guy in the world, you can't bring another one. These guys can't do what I do, man. No, I don't don't let them Nick, fool you, man. I've been Nick collecting shit, since, Gary. <laughs> what? I've been collecting for 30 years. You know, some people collect cars, some people collect jewelry, some people gamble, some people whatever. My thing is sneakers. I'm addicted to sneakers, and I can't shake the habit. I can't shake the habit. Is it true or false that you had an apartment in New Jersey just for sneakers? Just for sneakers, because my wife got tired of me collecting. So we got a three-car garage. The whole garage filled with sneakers, and she started cursing me out. So I had to rent an apartment in Jersey to just stash the sneakers in there. It's, it, you know, it's like, you know, the craziest thing, Poppy, is, uh, you know, sometimes we get addicted to stuff. Maybe you love golf now, right? And yeah. so one time I used to play pool and I, and I would go every day and I was like addicted for like a year, but that went out. I don't know why collecting sneakers, I just never get over the addiction. It's always like, every time I see a new pair of sneakers, I'm like, wow. Wow, this is crazy. This is great. This is dope. I don't know. I can't get over it. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> talk to me about your night live show on Instagram that everybody, that's the whole talk. That's the whole talk. There's not one musician that having to stop by. Talk to me about it, man. How you, how you hey, doing? hey, am I your classical? And Alpha, everybody came everybody. out. Everybody, that's the whole thing. I'm, lo I'm looking for a cuckoo. Yo, I'm looking for a cuckoo. Yo, you know the cuckoo's my man, Papi. Is that right? Donio Rosario, I made music with him many years ago. And he used to come to the Bronx. And they'd be like, yo, there's a guy out there with purple and yellow hair. He says he's looking for fat Joe. And they open the door, it's Antonio Rosario at Coco. He'll come find me anywhere. If I'm in the studio, wherever. Uh, living legend. Um, the show, Corona. The coolest, uh, the coolest Dominican of all time, Jerry. 
Yeah. Oh, yo, Tony Rosario, yo, he's the man. Yeah. He's the man. Yeah. Then Tony you got, Rosario. Uh, Anthony the Santos. coolest Dominican of all time. Yeah, of all time, bro. <laughs> and and so, uh, you remember uh, Oro Solido, Hasta La Quince? Yes. Con la tanguita la roja. Con la tanguita <laughs> roja. Con la tanguita <laughs> roja. Ah! Pero no You're va a tener que pagar. Ah, no. <laughs> Woo! No, yo, yo. <laughs> So anyway, Corona happens. I get scared. People are dying. People need somebody to talk to them. So my daughter pulls up the Instagram live. Before that, I never did it. And she said, your dad talked to the people. And I saw people really needed that. So we went on every day, 8 o'clock, every day, every day. And uh, we, you name it. We done had anybody from Dr. Fauci to Mike Tyson to Lisa Keys. Everybody and their mother. Been on the show. We need Big Poppy on the show. Like we. Hey, hey, <laughs> listen. I do whatever you want, y'all. You know you got me oh, right man. here, baby. <laughs> I love you, brother. I love you. You know that, man. Too much respect for you, man. Oh, Too much. Let's go. Let's go back Too and forth. You respect. already know. Yo, Let you me know, ask you a know. question, Poppy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, so we all know you had uh, the tragedy in Santo Domingo, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. When we seen the plane, because I don't know if you know, but mm -hmm. they, it was like, you remember O.J. Simpson, they was chasing the car? They yes. filmed your plane to America. I don't know if I you know it. that. Yeah. No. I, somebody told Santo me. Santo Domingo, in CNN, they was following the plane in the sky. Big Poppy's going here. to Boston. No, I swear to God. There's no exaggeration. So we have, you got it. And so you back in your country. Uh, did it was you hesitant to go back to Santo Domingo? You was like, that's my home, I'm going back. Listen, y'all, this is where I was born and raised. And I love this country so much that I always believe that when shit gonna happen, happen regardless no matter where you at. Mm. You know what mm. I'm saying? I don't I don't believe on continent, I don't believe I believe um that everybody have a destiny, but I also believe that you build your own destiny. You know what <clears> I'm saying? <throat> and uh, I'm glad that I came back to my country. I'm glad that everything went back to normal. I thank God every day for giving a second opportunity in my life to be with my kids, be with my family, you know, continue doing things. Because let me tell you, what I have learned from what happened to me is being humble, being good to people, Mm -hmm. You know, hold people out is what keep us all here. You know what That's I'm right. saying? And I believe that God keep me here for me to get better at what I used to do. You know what I'm saying? It's not for me to start hating. It's not for me to start backing up on people. It's for me to get better and better and better because he, he feel like he need me out here to continue, you know, doing the right thing. So... I'm not gonna quit. I'm not a quitter. I've never been a quitter. You know what I'm saying? I now, never let me tell you quitter. something. That's why I love Big Poppy. I'm telling you. That's why I love Big Poppy. I said, <laughs> the first time I met Big Poppy and we talked, I said, man, this guy like Fat Joe, man. We the same <laughs> yeah. guy, man. We, we like, keep it real. No, we I swear to God, real. I met Big Poppy. I walked away. I said, yo, this guy's just like me, man. He for the people. I love that, Papi. You're right. It's like, you know, we walk with God. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And That's it. it's up to God. People tell me all the time, Joe, why you still in the Bronx? You open businesses and, and Harlem and this and that. I'm like, yo, bro, if I can't be around my people, I don't want to be. I don't want it. I don't want it, Papi. What is it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what, yeah. where do you want me to be? I come from the hood. That's what I grew up and that's what I know. Where you want me to be? You know what I'm saying? Where you want me to be? I got, I got, a, I got a tough question for you, Papi. Who's the greatest Dominican artist ever? Wow, that's a good one. Music, well, music. It could be, it, it could be anything. It could be bachata. It could be, uh, it, it could be the. I, I, I got one, but I'm, I'm gonna let you say it. Let you say it first. Well. If you go back 
the thing is that the thing is, yo, and you know more about that than me. Generation to generation to generation, uh, 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 things change, and then another guy uh, uh, take over. And for example, right now we have a guy like Romeo Santos, who is the new generation of artists that is. Wow. I mean, is representing the planet. You're the biggest Basically. artist in the world. He's you know what I'm saying? Santo Domingo is bigger than the, he's the world. You know what I'm saying? He's the biggest. He's the biggest. You know what I'm saying? But and then he's bigger than anybody. Guy. Bigger than any, it, it, the guys. You know, I mean, you know better than me. So, and then you go back into the '70s when you talk about Pacheco, when you talk about those guys who basically open up the door for all of us, Puerto Rico, Dominican, everywhere. I mean, there's musicians that. Through, throughout the time, they change things, new things coming. I mean, and now with the with the social media platform, you know that sometimes you get to be bigger than what you already are, and just and it's because <laughs> you're putting music out there. It's a different era. People, <laughs> it's a different era, different time. But let me ask you, who you got? I got Omega. That's a really, really. Do you know why? You know how they call? You know how they call Omega? They call Omega El Maestro because Ooh. the guy, the guy, he have, Jerry, he's so special when it comes down to main music that everybody thinks that they need to learn from him. Mm -hmm. That's how far they better learn I mean, from him. <clears throat> Listen, yo, is, yo, papi, he used to live in Miami. The guy come to my studio every night, Lamborghini, this, this. He showed me a video where he said he's going to fly into a stadium. Like, he was said, you know that thing they got that you can fly? Yeah, oh, yeah. He did. Yo, Omega had that before he went back to South America. He was showing me. He said, I'm flying into my show. <laughs> over the, I said, yo, at the Tipo Loco, bro. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yo, this dude is crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it but, was crazy. Uh, I just love how he represents the people. I love his music. Uh, yeah, he could have been way bigger than what he is because, you know, he can't come out of Santo Domingo, but yeah, the man, it, he represents the people like nobody else. He represent, he represent music, I mean, of all levels, and, and the guy is a genius. When I used to play, you know how they used to call me? Some of my teammates, big furniture. <laughs> I'm going to go there now with you. Talk to me. <laughs> What was the relationship? Uh, what was the relationship between you and him? Why you guys were so tight? How that began to happen? Because let me tell you, I've been watching you guys since back there, so you know what I'm I talking about. I never found another person that I could trust, another person that I could love more than Big Pun. Me and him had the most fun you could ever have in the history. I mean, we would just be joking and everything together. And we come up together, I discover him, but he become my brother. He was, he was my little brother. I never had a little brother in my life. He was my little brother and I was his big brother. And we did everything, everything together. And when we grew together, like the first time we become millionaires, first time we sell million records, first time, so all that, happened together the first time we went to the Grammys. You know what I'm saying? Like, we from the Bronx, we going to the Grammys, he got his suit, I got my suit, he's getting it. You, you know what I'm talking about. Yep, so, yep, you know, yep. it's like draft day or something, you know, mm -hmm. so we going in there, Ricky Martin's doing Living La Vida Loca and Patti LaBelle, and it was just, it, it just everything I experienced in life for the first time I experienced it with him. And, uh, our bond, you know, we wouldn't break it for nobody. It's the true meaning of loyalty. Me and this guy was so tight that even to this day, we represent him to the fullest like he's still here. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. Like two years ago, I threw a birthday party and everybody was there. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, Mary J. Blige, everybody, right? And so we're throwing a big party and a reporter snuck in the party, we didn't know. He wrote the next day in the Daily News and in, in the Post in New York. And he wrote about the party. This one was there. This one was there. And he said, 
And the DJ mentioned Big Pun every five minutes like he was in the VIP section. Wow. That's how much, the man been dead 20 years, that's how much we love him that the writer noticed and said they mentioned Big Pun like he was in the building. Like he was in the building. Like he was dead. Yo, shout out Big Pun. He's going, yo, Pun, 20 years later, Big Pun in the building, yo. Yeah, that's how much we love them. We wear them in our heart. We wear them in the corazón. We wear them in our heart. You know, we wear them in our heart every day. I follow you guys so much, man. And I saw how devastated you were when he passed away, man. And 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 the good thing is that you had the good way to remember who passed away to keep his name alive. I I I I, I I'm a big fan of you, y'all. I've been watching you for so long, bro. I know every <laughs> single step that you have taken in music, dog. And, and to be honest with you, man, I'm so glad that we have here. Yeah, I'm going to let you come in, dog, because I'm getting too excited to talk to you. <laughs> I mean, I, I love this. I, I mean, like, because there, there's guys that we've obviously, we've interviewed that it's like Poppy might just be meeting them for the first time. But I love when he comes across someone that he has so much history with and like an appreciate, like I'm, I'm just sitting back watching you guys go like, go ahead. <laughs> you know, you know, I went, I went, let me tell you something. The Boston fans hate the Yankee fans more than anybody. <laughs> I was in Boston one time. I had a Yankee hat. They would not let me in the restaurant, puppy. It was like, get out of you know, here. They said, Fat Joe, you take the hat off if you want to come in. I went to like three, four restaurants. I wound up going to a They were missing with you. I'm like, yo, I was like, yo I'm not taking you. my Yankee hat off. They was like, you hey. can't come in here. <laughs> you can't come in here. Not the What is it like, uh, the rivalry of Boston and the Yankees when you knew you had to play them? Well, what do you, is it extra special going against the Yankees or? Let me tell you, yo. To me, the greatest thing that had ever happened to me was to play against the Yankees. Every school player that played for the Yankees break down to me the type of organization that the Yankees is, that the Yankees are. They basically say, and I'm talking about, I talk to guys that have been in different places, playing for different teams, and they always end up, all of them end up, uh, uh, with the same answer. So I used to get really prepared to play against everybody. But when I used to play against the Yankees, it was like I was burning salt on my brain throughout the game because it was so intense. And you, to me, while I played my 20-year career, I always saw the best coming out of that organization. I, I without a question. Like, <clears throat> what people don't understand is because the fans watch us play, the fans watch us go wide against each other, and the fans in their mind, they believe that we are enemy. No, you know what? It's not about being an enemy. It's about being a competitor, being professional. Because let me tell you, you have no idea how many times we got into a part on the field when somebody get hit, the bench clear, this and that. And then after the game, I was going and having dinner with Alfonso Soriano, with Aira, <laughs> with any of those guys. Yeah, that's what people don't understand. That is stay on the field. But you know what? The, 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 the most important thing about it is that what is happening at the time is not, it's not fake. It's real. Because you know what? That's what a competitor does. A competitor, a professional, and the way MOB educate all of us. I mean, we got we all got to the point, and I think I was big part of changing that. The fighting thing, I wasn't too comfortable with on the field because I don't want the kids to get the wrong idea. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a game that people come to have fun, to watch, you bring your kids, and sometimes those fights get to be out of control. And then now you see the confusion. And I learned that uh, one time that my son, D'Angelo, asked me, hey, Dad, why is it that every time you guys pretty much play against the Yankees, there is a fight going on? I'm like, son, the evil is out there. 
You never know what is going to happen within this game. You know what I'm saying? But it's not like like we won it. It just happened. You know what I'm saying? But reality okay, let me is, ask uh, you. Let me ask you a true, yeah. a true thing because I know you're a competitor, one of the best home run hitters of all time. You at the plate, and Mariano's at the at Mariano's at the plate. And you backing up? Are you saying fuck? Why this guy's pitching to me? Or are you saying I want to knock his shit out the park? Let me tell you, I, I got three answers for you. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, I used to say fuck. I gotta face this guy now. <laughs> and the other hand, I he well against Mariano. I he good against Mariano, but Mariano was not. A fun, a bad. Mariano had those days where no one won part of him. You hit over 300 against him. I hit good against he him. He hit over 300 you, against Mariano? Yeah, he, he yes. nine I nine hit, for 29, two doubles, Mariano, a homer. This is why I hated Big Poppy every time he <laughs> went to bat. Huh? <laughs> every time Poppy came yeah, up, but I was you know like, what? oh, yeah. shit, Yo. not Poppy. Yo, let Yo, listen to this, yo. Mariano, he break one of the bad that I love the most. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I used to hate face Mariano because it was either a broken bat or a broken bat. It was not fair. Ow. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think Mariano went into the Hall of Fame unique? You, yeah. Unanimous. <clears throat> unanimous. He was because the if, you, if we look at that. If we look at baseball like boxing, that's like Tyson Holyfield. Big, big Poppy uh, batting up, Mariano on the mound. Like, that's like a fuck. We could have sold out the garden for that right there. If we would have took a picture of you two staring at each other, it'd be like, oh boy. sold out, Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's going down. <laughs> that's you absolutely know? right. Mariano, wow. man, I tell you, I got so much respect for Mariano. Mariano, it's like a big brother to me, man. and. And like I said, man, I, I, I was so excited when I saw him going to the Hall of Fame as the only guy who basically got all the votes to be 100% legit. He was the perfect guy. I don't, I, don't, I don't think of any other player on earth to deserve that honor more than Mariano. Because Mariano was like in a straight line on the field and off the field. True story right here it is that Mariano was the kind of competitor that he, he would never bitch about anything. I I don't remember seeing a guy bitching about anything, ever. Yeah, he called me. He called me like two, three times. I couldn't believe it. Because anytime I see him, he was crying. He was like, hey, bro, you know, one day we got to get together. I'm like, what the fuck, Mariano's calling me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah, Mari no. yeah, no. Ma Mariano, man, he, I have mad respect for that guy. All right, listen up. The whiskey distillers at Whistle Pig Whiskey have cut loose, and this, the piggyback barrel aged rye smash, is so refreshing, naturally carbonated, basically a mix between a whiskey and a cocktail and a seltzer. Mm. Poppy, you like this? No oh, boy. Smell it. That's Woo. Fine. Yep. They actually taste amazing. I have like five packs of these at my apartment right. right now. I don't think there's anything like this out there. It's refreshing, bold, balanced. Whistle Pig's take on a more flavorful seltzer. And at 8%, sign me up. 100% down for that. 8%. 8%. Damn. It's made with 100% estate grown rye. get you rye. there. Yeah. <laughs> From the Whistle Pig Whiskey Farm. And who knew? that you could innovate rye in so many ways. The fruit in it, it's got fruit in it, Poppy. That's what I like about it. Yeah. The fruity of. Yeah. That gave me into it even more. I love that. <laughs> love that for you. The fruit in it is barrel aged and whiskey barrels, giving it those whiskey notes. And now I'm a big fan, obviously, and I'm a big whiskey guy. But this is going to be my go-to for tailgates out in the boat. Do you have a tailgates. boat? Tailgates. You got a boat? <laughs> Every time I want a boat, I drink one. I was going to say, like, like Poppy's got to have a boat. It's cheaper. Yeah, for a cheaper bonfire. <laughs> it's perfect for any kickback type of outing. And this right here, what do we got right here for this flavor? The ginger lime. 
It's my favorite. Ginger lime. Love yeah. that one. But they also have blackberry lemon fix. They do. And uh, session sister mint. Yes. You, so, you, you like citrus? Uh, I do. Yeah. I do. You seem like I you'd do, be right? a citrus guy. <laughs> <laughs> you seem like you would be. I do. It's all depend. It's all depend how my acid reflex are doing. That That's day. true. <laughs> that is true. Piggyback smash dot com for more info and make sure that you grab a box in select stores. And, and let me tell you, Faith and Mariano, it was it was something that uh it was not fun. Let me if tell I you something. It was fun. <clears throat> not fun. One time you playing the Yankees, I'm in Santo Domingo on vacation. <clears throat> and I pull up, you know how they got the little like grocery stores that everybody watched the TV. So I, I pull the car over and everybody's watching. Bo this is when I knew that Dominicans got more Boston fans than, than Yankee fans. I'm there, everybody's like, yeah, uh, uh, Pedro's on the mound. Every, fuck the Yankees, this, that. I'm standing there, Callaito, watching the game in, in, the, in the side of the road in, in Santo Domingo, and everybody's going against the Yankees. I'm like, fuck, these guys got all the Dominican fans. <laughs> we switch all the hats. <laughs> no, yeah, no, man. no yeah, lie, so man. Let, let me ask you another question, man. What got you into the music? Well, you know, I'm from the Bronx, so that's where... Hip hop was created. It was born there. Hip hop music, and not like you know. You go, we. I'm from Santo Domingo. Where you from? Capital. Capital. Where you from? San Pedro de Macari. Where you from? Romala. No, I'm from where hip hop was born, like El Barrio, where it was created. So as a baby, five, six years old, I'm watching Grandmaster Flash, Melly Mel. You know, all the biggest rappers at the time from the Bronx, they right there playing basketball, playing softball. The first Latino rapper was a guy named Ruby D. He was Puerto Rican. I really think he was Dominican, right? But he says he's Puerto Rican, right? Because, But his family, they had nine brothers, and that was the whole baseball team, the whole softball team. These guys were incredible. I would watch them play all the time. And so I, I grew up there. My big brother, who I always wanted to be like, uh, Angel, he started to rap and get into that. And so I wanted to be like him. So that's when I started writing raps and trying to be like him. And then I had a friend, Lord Finesse, who grew up with me and told me, yo, I'm going to be a big rapper. And I was like, yeah, right. And then one day he became a big rapper. And so he did it. So he showed me that it was possible. And so then I started rapping and I took it serious. Wow. So I the uh, the thing that we were talking about before we started recording was um, you know, the fundraiser that you were talking about in the Bronx. That was uh, that was something that happened very recently and you know, yet yes, you you're in Miami now and that's that's you know, a second home to you now, but the Bronx will always be home. So talk to us about uh, what's what's going on over there and, and, and how the listeners can help out. First of all, it's on my Instagram, Fat Joe, and I think it says HTTPS slash Fat Joe dot me slash Donate Bronx. So what happens is over 19 people were killed in this fire in the Bronx. Most wow. of them are immigrants uh, from, uh, from Gambia, from, from Africa. And um and a lot of you know with immigrants you know a lot of them don't have their papers a lot of them are scared to get help you know it's below zero so these people are homeless now right and they barely got coats they barely got food so I'm trying to use my megaphone I linked up with the mayor of New York City to donate money and I'm out there reaching out to my big poppies reaching out to my Jay Z hell yeah Jay Z already hell donated yeah. I I you know. Jack Dorsey from Twitter, you know, everybody I'm, I'm cool with, I'm hitting them up like, yo, please help the people. Because you know and I know that me and you, we can eat a steak and lobster tonight if we want. These people are in trouble. So it's our, it was our obligation as human beings to help these people. And so I'm doing whatever I can to have people donate. Uh, and I teamed up with the Mayor's Fund uh, to make sure it goes in the right hands. Because you never like to uh, get money 
and donate money and it goes in the wrong place. We want to make sure yes. the people and the families get the money. See, Jared, this guy is the full package. Mm -hmm. He's an incredible musician. And when it comes down to community service, man, this guy, like, I have heard so many stories behind the scenes. The fact, yo, go out there and help our people, man. And, and, and that's why you begin to be a role model without even trying because those are the type of things that he likes to do. Like, I, 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 I heard so many things about Fat Joe in the community, and that's why I dropped that question at the beginning, because mm -hmm. that's the real Fat Joe. And, and you know what, man? I always going to be proud of people like you, yo, because you put it together, homie. You really put it together, bro. And, and, and I'm, I'm very happy and proud of being able to talk to someone like you, because you are like an open book. You always are available for people. You always are wanting to help you always get down with the cuss man yeah we gotta go in there though we gotta go in there we gotta go um i would love to what else you got jerry i so uh, we gotta give a shout out to whistle pig whiskey made Do with 100 percent rye Whistle pig. they're Whistle always pig. doing 100 percent. so i gotta ask you because obviously we have the sneaker thing in common uh you've done music you've done movies philanthropy you name it you've done it so like what is your what does your bucket list look like when it's 100% done? What does that look like the, for remaining things? What do you mean? I, I, I speak the specific sneaker like, wise. What? Like anything. Like what, what do you want to accomplish that you haven't yet already accomplished? Well, I wanted to get my hands on these Eminem fours. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> This the M only grail. Fours. This the only grail. <laughs> Those are so. Wait, wait until my son to start watching this. <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble. This the only grail. But but listen, um, with me is this. Uh, I'm into media now. Uh, I got some TV shows coming out this year that I'm very very proud about. Um, on TV, big channels. Uh, as far as legacy. You know, I started really, really with nothing, dirt poor. And I'm trying to leave a legacy behind and make sure that people, you know, they they put some respect on my name by the time I leave Earth. So what happens is, what Poppy's saying is, you know, when I'm out of here and my name comes up, I want people to say, man, that guy was on the front line. That guy was giving back. He was here for his people, black, white, Spanish, Latino, whoever. Don't matter. You're all his people. And so that's that that that's the main important thing to me. That a guy who grew up with such a tough background and you know, I grew up in violence and, 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 and toughness and all that, that you can actually turn your life around and turn a negative to a positive. And not only that, influence the people behind you to say, Yo, he came from the hood like me. He came from a tough thing like me. The man is out here with the people. We could be out here with the people. We could invest in our community. Stuff like that. So so more or less, the the future from here on is just taking the legacy in another, in another level in the positivity. Everything positive. I don't even want to know negative no more. Like, I don't even want to hear something negative. No more. I don't even want to hear it. I don't want it around me. I don't want nobody. You know how we got friends that want to tell you the stories of that y'all don't want to know the story no more. I, maybe I'm old now. I don't know, but I don't want negative. I want strictly positive. Yo, Joe, we want to help. Now we can talk. Okay. Big Poppy got a charity. He went. Now we can talk. I want to be there. I want to do that. I don't want no negative. Everything I want to do. It's positive for the upliftment of the people. I love that. That's what's up. <clears throat> that answers your question, Jared. It does. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a it's a great way to live life. I wish I wish more people felt the same way. Um, in in your experiences through you know media and music and and all this connecting with people and even like the sneaker connection because you I'm sure you probably have like an actual relationship with Michael Jordan at this point. What is Poppy that? We got like? a relationship with him too. Yeah. What is uh? 
what is uh what if there's any good MJ stories we'd be happy yeah, to hear. I got so what happened was this. I'll tell you the best Michael Jordan story you have to tell anyone. Uh I think I've been his friend for many, many years. Like I'm Poppy's friend, right? He sees me, he don't call me fat Joe. He calls me Big Joe. My whole life, you're Big Joe. You don't call me Fat Joe. Call me Big Joe. And so I wanted to open a sneaker store in, in Washington Heights, home of the Dominicans, 158th and Broadway. So I spent a couple of hundred thousand out my pocket, white marble, fixtures, everything in the store. Then I call up people that I know from Nike, and I say, yo, I want you to come. You know, I'm opening a sneaker store. So they come and they say, this is cool, Joe, but you don't have permission. This is like, you got to get on a list. You got to this. So basically they told me I spent my money for no reason. They weren't going to give me the sneakers. I don't meet the criteria or whatever. So I'm like, holy shit. Like I spent all this money on a store. I thought it was just you open the store. It ain't like that. It's politics and things that come with it. Um, Two days later, I'm at a party that Michael Jordan throws for Neymar, Neymar Jr. He got on brand Jordan, Team Jordan. So I'm at the party, it's maybe 100 people, right? Carmelo Anthony's there, Neymar, fabulous, a bunch of people. So out of nowhere, you hear a voice from the other side of the bar. Big Joe, Big Joe. And everybody looks, it's Michael Jordan. He got a cigar in his hand. He said, I don't know how. Right? He said, your store, your store, I'll be there opening day. At your store, I'm coming opening day. And the whole place just stood in silence. The guys who told me two days before that they couldn't open the store ran over to me. It was like, I guess you have a store. I guess you have a store. I'm coming up there tomorrow. I love the location. I love, and that's, that's the best thing Michael Jordan could have ever did for me. Oh my god. Is it still open? You got no better. Yes, I have three stores now. That's amazing. Good for you. you I know love better. That. Yeah, that was I mean, you he know, blessed you know me. Don't. That's the best way you can bless me. I feed my family, I feed the community. We 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 offer inspiration and hope. You know, uh it was the best thing uh that could happen for me. That's, That's awesome, amazing. man. I love to hear stories like that. I now love you're gonna it. have to take Yo, uh, D'Angelo there. I got. I have to. When I go to New York. I got. To, I got. I got. I have to make him stop. Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 was the, that was the last time I talked to him. His son posted something on his Instagram story, and it was just six bags of sneakers. And I was like, I all right. Now I gotta. You have my attention. I was like, I, I gotta you know the collection reason, now. The reason. The reason why I keep pulling out sneakers right now is because I'm redoing my sneaker. Book. Right? So I reached out to Marcus Jordan. He hasn't hit me back. <laughs> you know, I, I sent him an SOS distress call. Like, yo, like, do you got something for the new sneaker collection? He hasn't <laughs> hit me back. Mm. I'm waiting hey. on Marcus to hit me back. Wait, wait I mean, until he finish, wait until he finished that golf game that he at right now. <laughs> he called you back. <laughs> he must be playing right. golf right now. Do his addicted to golf. Yeah, yeah, they addicted to golf for real, for real. Oh, I'm here, yo, listen, my brothers, I love y'all. I thank y'all for having me on here because I'm working on getting all these donations and stuff. So that, I love you, Poppy. I love everything you stand for. Thanks for having me on your show. I love you too, yo. I love you too, man. We got to get together when I come to New York. I got to see you. Let's go for the New dinner. New York, country, Miami, man. wherever you want, I'm here. All right. Love, I you, love brother. you, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.